Boots no Kami and Izumi no Kami. Japanese Wang Xian, I'm telling you. <laughs> Katsugeki, you know, with the release of Token Ranbu Kai and a whole bunch of other words that I think are tacked on to the end of it. I figure what better time to whip out the tier list and rank all the Token Danshi from Token Ranbu. Do you know what Token Ranbu is? If you know what Token Ranbu is, feel free to skip ahead to the actual tier list part of this video. Token Ranbu Online is a mobile game. You play some master of time at a citadel and you're able to take different real life swords from across Japanese history and turn them into a hot cute attractive our and unattractive anthropomorphic swords in order to fight this evil army that's trying to change history because of course it is. There's a sword for everybody. So even if you don't know Token Ranbu, there isn't really spoilers to really be had in my opinion. Going from ascending order from the bottom up, let them rust. These are the Token Danshi that I don't like. Better off forgotten to time. Obviously time travel is a big part of the series. These are ones that I don't, I don't hate. But I, I didn't need to know them. They, 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 they can be forgotten to tie. Museum material is like, I like you enough that you you should be in a museum. People should see you. But I don't need to see you every day. The sword to my sheath, uh, <laughs> reference. And then stab your Saniwa is like a really good thing Um, in a post-killing stalking world. <laughs> The more violent, the more romantic to me. But Saniwa is uh, the main character, which is Watashi. So we're gonna start off with one of the five great swords of Japan, Juzumaru Tsunetsuga. Museum material. As, as one of the five great swords of Japan, it only makes sense. Nihongo, the entire Japanese language. Look at this, we already have like a <laughs> femme man. Basically like, um, the character for daddy issues. <laughs> Just kidding. I feel like I wanted to like Nihongo more, but I didn't. I'm gonna put Nihongo in Better Off Forgotten to Time. Sudomaru Kuninaga. Sudomaru, I like didn't care. I feel like for most of Hanamaru. And then I started to care about him in Katsugeki. So I'm gonna put him in museum material. I feel like he's fairly popular. He's a snow scalp. That usually gets the girls going. There is no way all of these are going to fit. <laughs> Tombokiri. I'm gonna put Sudomaru in the sword to my sheath. I'm not attracted to him, but I do like him as a character. Tombokiri, I am going to put put in also the sword to my sheath. I really like Tombokiri. When he fought the Otachi or Odachi, Otachi? Is it Otachi? Emotional. Imano Tsurugi. Imano Tsurugi I don't care for. I'll put him in Let Them Rust. Let's have some, some, um, <laughs> let's start some sh He's always around somebody. Who is he always around? Iwatoshi? Shoku Daikiri Mitsutada. Even if you aren't familiar with Token Ranbu, you probably know Shoku Daikiri. He's clearly the inspiration for Kaya from Genshin. <laughs> he was clearly inspired by Date Masamune at all. <laughs> but also, Wotaku Nikoi wa Muzukashi. Wotakoi love is hard for an otaku. Koyanagi. She cosplayed him at some point in the series. <laughs> Easily recognizable. Stab your Saniwa. I love Shoku Daikiri. Soza Simonji. Soza Simonji I like. Do I love? I'm gonna put Soza in museum material. Nagasone Kotetsu. I can't remember who he's always arguing with, but it's him. Oh, it's the it's the the pink haired one. I forget their name. We'll get to them eventually, obviously. Hachigatsu. He I'm just not, not attracted to. Let them rust, cause I just he's a faker. <laughs> just kidding. His ch are always out, and that should be a plus, but it wasn't in this case, so I'm gonna let him rust. Oop! The icon, the one who started it all, Mikazuki Munichika. Mikazuki is like the first thing I ever saw about Token Ranbu. He's probably the first thing anyone has ever seen about Token Ranbu. But Mikazuki is just like a character and a character design whose presence like commands your attention. I mean, we all know where he's going to go. He's going directly into Stab Your Saniwa. Sorry, I'm gonna move Shoku Daikiri. <laughs> to make a room for one of the five great swords of Japan. You're a nice second, but you're no Mikazuki. No one is Mikazuki. There's a reason there's no sword, no sword numbered higher than him. <laughs> it's been released since. Hotoru Maru, I have a really funny story about Hotoru Maru. Hotoru Maru was a character that I did not even realize was in Hanamaru. <laughs> was making this tier list and I was like, who the f is this Hotaru Maru? And then I like realized after like doing some digging, not even doing some digging, like looking up, I'm like, was he in Hanamaru? And then finding the characters and he's like always with Aizen and uh, is it Akashi? I don't remember. I didn't realize that was Hotaru Maru. <laughs> I guess it's the hat. But I like Hotoru Maru. I'm gonna put the sword to my sheath. I really like Hotoru Maru. After I re recognized who the f he was. Oh, speaking of, Akashi Kuniyuki. I really like Akashi. He's hilarious. I'm gonna put the sword to my sheath. He is just... <laughs> Can't be bothered to do anything. And like low key character design, so we stand. Oh, a fave, Nikari Awe. I'm gonna put him in Stab Your Saniwa. <laughs> He's hilarious. Oh, 
Dodanuki Masakuni. Dodanuki, in my opinion, is one of what I call <laughs> One of the official gay icons of Japan, along with like Seiji Shingen and like Asuma Saratobi and like Ishin Kurosaki. <laughs> Countless others, maybe I'll do a video on them one day. Before I actually like took the plunge into anything token Ranbu, uh, I knew Mikazuki first and foremost, and then I knew Dodanuki Masakuni. <laughs> the only reason I knew Dodanuki um, is because of <laughs> because like so many artists I know have drawn him. So many Japanese artists have drawn him. And him and put him in doujinshi so that's the entire reason i know him and he was a big factor in me even getting into uh token ranbu at all so he's absolutely in stab your saniwa he is so hot ochidori jumanji yari i know who he is because i was just looking at the token ranbu list and i was like oh he's really hot <laughs> So he's going against Stab Your Sarima. Also, I believe he's voiced by, I forget the person's name. It'll probably be on the screen, uh, but I love their voice and I've seen random voice clips of him and he's hot. And he's part of this new trend of what I like to call skunk scalps that have been on the rise recently across um, media. Prepare to see more uh, black and white hair color schemes uh, in anime adaptations going forward, but he's hot. He's shown a little cleavage. He's a little edgy looking, but he sounds adorable. So I'm going to put him in Stab Your Sarima. I barely know him. Oh! Oh, Yaman Bagiri Kuni Hero. I probably would have put him in Better Off Forgotten to Time because I just didn't care about him. And then watching him in Hanamaru, I found him kind of annoying. So he was kind of like in between museum material and Better Off Forgotten to Time. But after watching him in Katsugeki and seeing him like go off, like he made me cry several times. So I'm gonna put him in the sword to my sheath because it's what he deserves. He's not a fake. He's real. He's like, Roxas. <laughs> Kogitsune Maru. I'm gonna put him in museum material. I feel like he barely did anything in Hanamaru, but I liked him as a character and he's always with Mikazuki. So if you're friends with Mikazuki, you at least have that counting for you. Kosetsu Samonji. He's always with whoever this is. I forget their name. But Kosetsu is the funnier one. I'm putting Kosetsu in the sword to my sheath. Monoyoshi Sadamune. This is the lucky one. I'm gonna put him in, but ah, plot wise, I want to put him in museum material because he was very helpful. I'm gonna put him in Better Off Forgotten to Time because it <laughs> clearly has more slots open. Otegine or Otegine. Another spear. The only thing he's good at is stabbing. <laughs> So he's going into the sword of my sheath. Mutsunokami Yoshiyuki, AKA. <laughs> I'm gonna talk about it with the next one. I'm gonna need more space. I'm gonna put him in the sword to my sheath. Mutsuno Kami is hilarious. I w if he didn't have that little rat tail in the back. Izumi no Kami Kaisada. I'm gonna keep in museum material. All I'm saying is when you have, these names are always so much. Mutsuno Kami and Izumi no Kami. Japanese Wang Zian, I'm telling you. <laughs> Katsugeki, you know. Just look at them. They literally fit the aesthetic. Not only do they somewhat fit the aesthetic, personality-wise, it also matches. Hachisuka Kotetsu, AKA Virgo Shaka. Better off forgotten to time because he's pretty, but he looks like a Saint Seiya Gold Saint ripoff way too much for my liking. Oh no, he looks like um Aries Mew. <laughs> That's who he looks like. I still have to see the original Saint Seiya. I've talked about this <laughs> one day. Ishigo Hitofuri. All right, are y'all ready for... <laughs> This is what is going to be a section of the video uh, called the Toshiro Roundup. I'm gonna put Ichini in the sword to my sheath because he is generally attractive. I hate to separate Wang Xian, but. <laughs> <laughs> Yagen Toshiro, absolute fave. Stab your Saniwa. Yagen in f***ing Katsugeki was so f***ing, he's a f***ing beast. I f***ing love Yagen. <laughs> and that deep voice and those short shorts. Honebami Toshiro, museum material. I feel like he didn't do enough. Wasn't he the one who went back to the storage house? Yeah, he's gonna go in museum material. Gokotai. Gokotai is honestly a disappointment. I'm putting Gokotai. <laughs> but I'm keeping the tigers. I just don't like Gokutai's character design at all. I wish he was actually cute. <laughs> Maeda Toshiro. Also don't really care for the character design. I'm gonna put um, Maeda Toshiro in Let Them Rust. Shinano Toshiro. Shinano is better off forgotten to time. I remember they were the one who was looking for like a, a scarf. Better off forgotten to time. I like the character design though. Namazuo Toshiro. This is Honebabi's twin. I'm gonna put them in Let Them Rust. I just didn't like them. <laughs> Atsushi Toshiro, one of my favorite Toshiros. He goes in Stab Your Saniwa. I loved Atsushi. He was part of my, one of my favorite moments from uh, Hanamaru season two. Goto Toshiro. Oh, 
let them rust. <laughs> Hakata Toshiro. I'm gonna put him in Better Off Forgotten to Time because he invests in the stock market, even though he's really adorable. Hirano Toshiro. What's the difference between this Toshiro and this Toshiro? The Toshiros are not doing well. I didn't know, I, I didn't realize I disliked this many of them. Midare Toshiro. Oh, let them rust. I didn't care for Midare at all. Akita Toshiro is adorable. I love him. The sword to my sheath. Damn, how many Toshiros <laughs> the bottom of the barrel. I feel bad. <laughs> I might have to go back and reorder some of the Toshi Rose. But there's also so many of them. Like there's so many options. Like why would I, why would I care? <laughs> Oh, oh God, let them rust. Which one was this? <laughs> I don't even know the name. Pocho Toshiro, the one who like wants like a housewife's whatever. F out of here, f***ing annoying. <laughs> I didn't like them at all. Oh, best Toshiro, Nakigitsune. Nakigitsune is in Stab Your Saniwa. I love him and his little fox. Him and Asushi, obviously best Toshiro. Uh, him, Yasushi Yagen, best uh, Toshiro's. And that's the end of the Toshiro section. On to literally everything else. Oh, Kurikara. Better off forgotten the time. His whole thing about like, I'm antisocial is just kind of whatever. I like the character design, don't love the hair. <laughs> if the hair was different, I would love him a whole lot more. Tarotachi, I love Tarotachi, the tall one. The sword to my sheath, I love Tarotachi. I don't like long hair, but he's kind of hot. Jirotachi, Jirotachi I'm putting in museum material. Onimaru Kunitsuna. This is another one that I do not know at all, and I believe they appear in the Hanamaru movies that I haven't seen yet. It's museum material. He would technically be in The Sword to My Sheath. I can't remember if it's him or someone else who has nipples in their character designs, but I f***ing hate his uh, casual outfit. I really... <laughs> really don't like it. Aizen Kuditoshi, I love Aizen. Aizen is in Stab Your Saniwa. He might be my favorite Aizen, which is sacrilege to say as a Bleach fan. <laughs> Again, him and Atsushi were part of that moment at the end of Hanamaru in season two. Like both of them had achieved their like unleashed <laughs> states, unlocked their potential. Uh, rest in peace, Akira Toriyama. We don't want to talk, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> it's depressing. Them together in that final, in, in the rescue squad. Oh! And then Kashu was there, but we'll get to Kashu. <laughs> There's no spectrum of Toshiro's here. <laughs> it's either I really like them or I don't. Iwatoshi. Iwatoshi is like weirdly hot. So I'm gonna put him in the sword to my sheath. Cause that face is not cute, <laughs> but he somehow is. Like he's somehow like very attractive. I could either hit it from the back. He has that hood. We might just pull it over his face. <laughs> Sayo Simonji, I'm gonna put in Better Off Forgotten a Time. Didn't like the character design really. I liked him with Soza and Kosetsu. The trio of them are adorable. I love them. They're like a little family, but individually not strong enough. Better Off Forgotten to Time. Kasen Kanesada, museum material. I feel like there was more that could have been explored with the character in Hanamaru. Higekiri, the first of the twins. Higekiri, museum material. Generally like the characters and it's nice enough. I like the whole twin thing with him and his brother that he's consistently forgetting. Probably the, the lesser of the two twins in my opinion. He's a Maru who's always complaining about his Anija. I'm gonna also put museum material. I'm gonna keep the twins connected. I think their dynamic is hilarious. I like the aesthetic of the two of them. But once we get to the face, I'm just really not. These are like hairstyles I really don't care for, even though I really like both voice actors. Taiko Gane Sadamune, AKA Shoku Dakiri's boy wife. I'm gonna put him in museum material. He was nice enough, but he's mostly boosted by the fact that he's Shoku Dakiri's boy wife. Horikawa Kunihiro. I love Horikawa, stab your Saniwa. He's one of Junya Enoki's premier boy wife roles. Yamato no Kami Yasusada. I am putting in... There's two options here. I don't think you guys will like either of them. Either in Better Off Forgotten the Time or Let Them Rust. Let Them Rust. I just didn't like him. Honestly, the most trying part of Hanamaru was the fact that him and Kashu were the main characters. We'll get to Kashu, I think, next. I just, I'll just do it right now. Kashu Kiyumitsu. I'm putting in Better Off Forgotten Time. I liked him a little bit more. I liked the red a little bit more than a blue. Let me reorganize this. The Japanese language. The luck of the Japanese. Aries Mew. Still a lot left. <laughs> I really thought I was gonna stall for time. That is not the case. Urashima Kotetsu. Oh, he's the one with the voice of Kazuma. <laughs> 
<laughs> from Gona Suba also airing this season. Better off forgotten a time. I find him largely forgettable. So Haya no Surugi, who I believe was the one who had like a heart to heart episode with Yaman Bagiri. I'm generally not attracted to him, but he has nipples in his character design. So I'm going to put him in museum material because that shit needs to be framed in a museum. Kiko Sada Mune, one of <laughs> two reasons for the funniest episode of Hanamaru. I'm gonna put in the sword to my sheath. When like, he's in like the sauna or whatever with Muramasa and uh, Kiyomitsu <laughs> getting hot cause he's always clothed or whatever. And he like pulls <laughs> the shirt and you can see the rope that Kiyomitsu sees it. And he notices he sees it, yo. And he's like, oh, everyone has their secrets or whatever. That shit is so funny. <laughs> I have not laughed that hard in so long. Okane Hira, who is absolutely a stab your Saniwa. The things I would do. I would literally commit seppuku with this man. He is so fine with the voice of Toa from Slow Damage, of, <laughs> of Kagami from Kuroko no Basket, Baz V from Bleach. The most offensive thing about Hanamaru season two is that they teased this man in the opening sequence all season and made me wait eight episodes for him to have one half episode about him. And I mean, it was worth it. Like he is absolutely worth it, but they made me wait. And then he like didn't appear like mostly at all for the rest of the entire, like why would you tease this fine of a man? Uguisumaru, Okanehira's um, <laughs> guardian? We'll, pull, we'll say guardian, um, because <laughs> he is chronicling that man, relatable. But the weird thing about Uguisumaru is that he was in both seasons of Hanamaru and he was like largely forgettable to me through both of them. He didn't have a presence really, which maybe is part of how he's able to chronicle Okanehira. I want to put him in the sword to my sheath to keep him closer to my man, but I'm going to keep him in museum material. Sengo Muramasa, let me first say, not my Muramasa. My Muramasa is fake go Muramasa. 1000%, that's my man, Lost Belts anime when. But this Sengo Muramasa is uh, Junichi Suobe's greatest role ever. <laughs> Again, him and what is it, Kiko? That episode was so funny. The vocal choices that like Junichi Suobe does with Sengo Muramasa is so funny. Like the laugh, I'm gonna put him in the sword to my sheath, even though he's not my Muramasa, infinitely less attractive Muramasa, even though his whole thing is being a Yamabushi Kunihiro, he is going in uh, I'm putting him in Stab Your Saniwa. Part of me wants to put him in the sword to my sheath, but he's f***ing hot. They give him some stupid f***ing side, like front bangs, ponytail, second form or whatever. I hate that shit. Why the f*** would you do that? Especially when he's more shirtless in his second, like, what the f***? It's offensive. It offends me. Yaman Bagiri Chogi. This is who uh, Yaman Bagiri is based off of. I haven't met them yet, but but I really like the character design. I like the contrast of like, I think the real and the fake and like how these two are like twins or brothers or something, but museum material. Ishikirimaru, I love Ishikirimaru. I'm putting him in the sword to my sheath. He was the first one to go shirtless in the series, so I absolutely respect him for it. Fudo Yukimitsu, the drunk sword. I'm putting him in Let Them Rust. Way too concerned about Oda Nobunaga and I've seen Sengoku Basura, so I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, I actually love Oda Nobunaga and f***ing Basara. You are Oda Nobunaga. Azuki Nagamitsu. I don't really know him, but he is still net attractive. But he's not as attractive as everyone that is in Stab Your Saniwa. So I'm gonna put him in the sword to my sheath. Odenta Mitsuo, Mitsuyo. This is the other Shibari sword. I'm gonna put him in museum material. The whole thing about him <laughs> like not getting along with animals was adorable. And he's just like out here like Shibariing <laughs> in public. So you have to respect it. Heshikiri Hasebe. Heshikiri Hasebe. Oh, Araji. <laughs> That's me! Put him in Stab Your Saniwa. Ooh, arguably, arguably my favorite Token Ranbu character. He exceeded expectation. Like I knew he was attractive, meaning the character, and how much of a disaster he is, and how strict he is, and like how he needs to loosen up. He's definitely top three, if not my favorite. Kogarasumaru, AKA everybody's dad. Let them rust. I just found the whole gag about like, I'm everybody's father to just not be interesting at all or entertaining. I don't like character design. He's very like rickety. <laughs> I just don't like, I just don't like um anything he's giving me. <laughs> Sanchomo. I'm gonna put him in Stab Your Saniwa. First of all, he has the voice of Kakashi Hatsuke, which is hot. Second of all, the character design is hot. 
Third of all, someone told me that there was like a Kickstarter and like a crowdfunder to like get the sword, either like a, a sword, one of the swords related to Token Ranbu, reclaimed for like a town or something, or like rebuilt or something, resmithed. And I don't know if that's Senchomo, but I know a similar thing happened. Like there was crowdfunding involved with him when I looked at the Wikia page. This is like the power of mobile games and women. But that's crazy. That's wild. That, that's impressive. But I absolutely love him. He's super hot, even though I don't know him. <laughs> Shishio, he's the one with the Nue. I'm putting him in museum material because Nue is adorable and I net like his character design. Now the last one and the most important one, Konosuke, I love Konosuke. Konosuke just goes here. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave him here. I love Konosuke. He's so cute. I love all the Konosukes, but this Konosuke is my favorite Konosuke. Basically, like if I was to rank Konosukes, number one is uh the main, the second unit, Kasugeki Konosuke. He's number one. That voice is so fing cute. <laughs> Number two is Shiro Emiya Konosuke for the first unit. I call him that because he has Shiro Emiya's voice actor and that's how I easily recognize him. Dweeby voice, a dweeby Konosuke, we're here for it. And then number three is probably Hanamaru Konosuke, the one that comes in and is the replacement Konos Konosuke who has like his own root. And actually, no, that's probably number four. Number three is probably Bamboo Sword Konosuke at the Citadel in Katsugeki. <laughs> because he just like gave Surumaru a whack. Konosuke is best. Uh, the only thing better than Mikazuki is Konosuke. All right, so let me like relook at this. Mikari, I think I'm gonna move to the sword to my sheath because I like him. I'm not attracted to the character at all. And I think he's funny at times, but it's not like I, I don't love, love him looking at everybody else on this list. Like he's definitely bottom of the barrel. Sudumaru, I'm gonna put in museum material because I like him, but I definitely don't like him enough. Tomokiri, I'm gonna put in museum material as well. Ah, I'm gonna move Uguisumaru to sword to my sheath because there's something about him that I do generally like. I'm gonna move Odenta up as well. Plot twist, I'm gonna put him on. <laughs> Time. I want to put Onimaru. Is it Onimaru? <laughs> I might want to bump Onimaru up as long as I ignore his casual outfit. I'll do that. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. I feel like I'm a little mean to Nihongo. The Japanese language deserves better than that. Aries Mew can stay here. E museum material. Ah, uh, museum material. Museum material. Museum material. I feel bad. <laughs> Here. I felt like I was being mean to him. I'm gonna put him in a better off forgotten time. <laughs> I'm gonna put Namazuo in, where's Honibami? I'm gonna put in museum material cause they're aesthetic. So this is my final tier list. Konosuke is supreme. <laughs> It took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. Hopefully, Token Ron Bukai is going well. It's only gonna be eight episodes, which is offensive to me, quite frankly. We barely get any Token Ronbu anything as it is. Let me know who your faves are from Token Ronbu in the comments below. Uh, let me know which one of these decisions offended you the most. Let me know which decision you agree with the most. Let me know where you would rank some of your faves. Let me know some of your faves that didn't even aren't even on this list because I literally don't know who they are and I'm not attracted to them based off of like just surface level seeing the character design. Um, let me know, let me know your favorite Konosuke. The most important question. Make sure to head over to my Patreon if you want to hear my full thoughts on Token Ranbu overall, all of the anime adaptations aside from the Hanamaru movies. There I'll actually have my actual top, I think 16 favorite swords. Other than that, I'm also playing Slow Damage continually, forever and always. I think at this point in time, the next video is supposed to be, oh, I might be finally delivering a sequel to a video I did a long time ago. Or maybe I'm lying. I'm recording this in early March. Plans knowing me have probably changed. Bye!